Hi everybody, I'm Keith McGuire, Mark's behind the camera, and today we're going to be doing a Christmas card, or a holiday card, or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, what I do is, uh, and obviously a watercolor. What I like to do is I'll go and find my envelope first, uh, you know, stationary, wherever. Uh, this one is uh, basically eight and a half, eight and a half, uh, well. Eight and a half, five and a half was the size to go in the envelope, right? Right, so eight and a half uh, across, and uh, yeah, exactly, eight and a half by five and a half. So what I did was, you know, made a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, fold it in half. This is my arches. I kind of tear all the edges so it has that deckled edge and I then take the tape put it around the edge so I'll have a nice pretty white uh, border around it uh, for when I'm finished so here's my envelope get that out of the way I'm gonna begin so we have a um, we're gonna have a picture of this yep uh, <clears throat> on my website uh, link to this uh, particular image if you want to uh, follow along do it with me that'd be great yeah so in the description below there'll be a link uh, to download the black and white line drawing of this winter scene uh, as well as links to where you can purchase all the supplies that Keith's using in today's video such as the sminky brand pan paints the arches watercolor paper the low cornell brushes uh, the butcher trays, I think a few other odds and ends on there too. Uh, so if you use those links, we get a small commission as a thank you. You don't pay anything extra. And if you want to just use that list to go purchase the items at your local art supply center, by all means, support them if you can. Alright, so I'm ready to begin. I think, I think, I'm going to start with the sky first. So... Again, I'm going to go with a kind of, uh, great, I forgot the name of the paint. Schminkies? No, the, uh, the name of the color of the paint. Uh, blue. It's blue. Oh my goodness. I have terrible sometimers disease. Um, ultra green blue. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, only look. the most popular blue yeah. that you use in every exactly. painting since the beginning of time. That's the one you don't remember. Yeah. So, so good night, folks. It's, yeah. been, <laughs> it's been fun. All right. So, basically, normally I would wet the paper and I would kind of just do my color, get my color in there. But this has a lot of little white uh, or snow-covered pine trees in the background. So... I'm going to be a little more careful. I'm going to leave, you know, leave the trees alone. And since it's such a small area, I'm just going to paint it. I'm not going to wet it and paint it. Um, just seems like a too much, too much effort when all you when you're doing small areas like this. You might as well just just do it. Just paint it. Alright, I'm just working my way across the scene here. As you can see, I also have a couple foreground trees that I'm not painting. Good for me. Yeah, I like it when you don't paint on video. <laughs> I'm not supposed to paint that. Alright, so what we do want to do is try to keep the value about the same going across the sky. So, you got one little section that's a little dark. Hey, grab a grab a something and try to try to even it up. Grab a brush or grab a paper towel, whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. If you need to absorb a little paint, so so as you can see, I'm just kind of working my way around the pines. Now, here, this area here, 
pine trees are very far away, so I'm just going to kind of bring it down a little bit. Okay. So as you can see, what I'm doing is adding a little more color to the top because while it's still wet, obviously, um, because that, you know, as you come down on the horizon, it usually gets lighter. So as you can see, as I go across, I'm just making it a little bit darker across the top here. All right. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just kind of wet it a little bit along the bottom here. Top's already wet. I don't want any hard edges or hard bleeds. So what I'm going to do is I add a little water along the base there. And I pick it up. And I can kind of force the paint to run down towards the top again. So that I'll have a lighter base and a little darker sky, you know, at the top. So as you can see, I just grab a little bit of water and push. So that's all I'm doing. All right. So I've kind of got uh, a very bright blue sky in, and I'm going to. Um, work a little bit on my foreground snow here. So I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of crimson. So I'm going to have a little purple, add a little purple to my snow so it isn't all just the same color as the sky and everything all blends together. So I'm just adding a little bit of that Crimson to my uh, ultramarine blue to get this it's very uh, pretty, very pretty purple. PP, pretty purple. Now I know Mark has left the room. He's not correcting my English or nothing. <laughs> Alright. So as you can see what I do to create a kind of a block of snow, a chunk of snow, is I paint a line and then I bleed it away and usually up, I bleed it up, okay? I don't usually want to bleed it down because it, that's just would be prospectively weird. Yeah, slightly odd. So again, I'm going to do this again. You can see how I do this. So I have a bank coming down to a rough bank coming down to a um, to a river. So you know the texture, you know snow falling over stuff. You see lumps and bumps, that kind of thing. So as you can see, I've kind of bled away again a little bit of on one edge. Uh, let's do it one more time. You can watch one more time. Oh, here's another chunk of snow right here. And as you can see, I don't do very smooth lines. I like my I like my snow chunky with lots of stuff, rocks, and stuff like that underneath. So again, I take the see how I don't blend both sides of the line, one side, and let it bleed up again. All right. So there's a good start. The other thing is you can kind of break it up and it doesn't have to be just bands of color. You can break it into little blocks and chunks. That's what I'm doing here and I'm adding just a tiny bit of that violet color to it just to make it a little more interesting. Now that time I did break it because I wanted the color to kind of flow down into the snow below. Okay, so 
That looks fun. Um, I'm going to come, since I'm still working on this, I'm going to, I'm going to just make a little bit of an outline here. And the only reason I'm doing this is so I can kind of judge where my lake is going to go. My, not my lake, I'm sorry, my river. There is a river. So what I'm doing is I'm just slightly outlining this so I can see it just a little more clearly. Okay. All right, cool. So, oh. so at this point, um, at this point, I think I'm going to start putting my river in. Now, usually I wait for the darker stuff later, okay? But uh, this time, I'm going to get some dark, the, the lake water in there, just because I want to be able to see uh, the values that I'm working with, okay? So, as you can as you can see, adding a little bit of ultramarine blue because this is cold, dark water. I like to leave a little bit of white, give it that little bit of reflection, and you can see it's kind of going, gonna be going under the bridge. And the other half of it's kind of going off the page on this side. Well, it's not too dark, but it gives me an idea of where the lake is. I'm going to take a little bit of a paper towel here because uh, some of my river has flowed up over my bridge and I don't want that. So hmm. I pulled that off a little bit. Whoops. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just kind of coming in. I'm going to start adding. A little bit of the bank on the other side so I'm just gonna see I kind of bleed this up a little bit so we can kind of see where it is I've left the white that's going to represent probably a little bit of the shadow of the bank on the other side uh, the reflection not the shadow I'm sorry all right so, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to Okay. Again, I put the color down and then I want to just gently bleed it up. All right. Now this is in no way done here, but it's just a gives me enough value to kind of see my see my river coming across here. You know, I've got my bridge coming. Um, at this point, I might want to stop. Yeah, it's a good time to take is a break. It? Yep. Okay. Good. Um, just because I want everything to dry so I can go back in and keep working. So, our have at them cameras there, Mark. All right, we're going to continue with uh, the 
Bridge over the River Kwai? No, that's a different. What? Yeah, that's a different uh, painting I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna begin. So I've got my background. I got snow. I've got a bridge, and I've got some. Uh, once again, I got some uh, birch trees. I'm gonna put in the foreground. Mm, so birch trees. Let me start by. I'm just gonna kind of right down the middle. Just out of curiosity, do you paint any other kind of trees? Yes. Other than pine trees, I forgot it. You do do pine trees. I do do indigenous tree, deciduous trees. However, the thing is, they um, are usually around around only in the summer. So that's why I like the birches because they're distinctive. So what I do is I take a little light strip of brown right down the middle. What we're going to be doing is creating a little bit of color on the. Kind of like a back end of the of the tree, or or where the light is kind of coming towards us. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Just going to gently run a strip of that brown up there. Um, birch trees are white, granted, but they have they have a lot of color in them. And there's a lot of different kinds of birch trees, too. So with this, what I like is um, the, it creates a little bit of color in a rather colorless tree. So, which is supposed, not colorless, but supposedly white tree. Just makes it a little more interesting. So I've got the brown down. And now I'm going to apply the ultramarine blue. And for fun, not in the same picture, but what you should try to do sometime, if you do this a couple times, um, put the blue down first, then the brown. Just try them in a couple different ways, because you'll get, you will get a different color each time. It's just the nature of the beast. So why didn't you do one tree blue first and one tree brown? Yeah, first? I don't, I don't want them to be. Is it that visible of a yes. difference? Like, yeah, be like, holy cow, those yeah. trees wouldn't have grown together. Yeah, it would be like two distinct things going on. You'll go, what? Mm. Then the last thing I do is I add um, a little bit of violet. So I might take the the red that we were, or the carmen we were using, mixing with the uh, uh, ultramarine blue. Why I can't, I can't remember that name today. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll Whoa, too dark. Way too much, way too dark. So let's be careful. Um, so I'm going to try again. I'm going to get a little more water in my brush. Okay. We're just going to ring it just a little bit straight down the middle again. And... Last little guy right here. Okay, good. I'm going to let them set up while that's setting up. I'm going to come in with a very light. Uh, this is uh, indigo for my bridge. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a kind of a grayish cast to it. I'm going to actually add a little other, a few other colors into that. Mostly because we've got a very blue painting to begin with. And I just don't think we need everything to be blue. So I'm going to add just a touch of uh, burnt sienna into this uh, gray that I've already laid down. Just trying to kind of change the color a little bit there might look like there's a couple different kinds of rock or whatever that's uh made this bridge all right i'm gonna there's a very deep shadow under the bridge so i'm going to try to put that in if i'm lucky i won't hit what i've already painted so uh we, we lost maybe a little bit of uh, footage uh, due to um, 
uh, memory storage. So we're, I was working on the bridge, and all I did was put a little shadow under the bridge. Bridge is a little brown and gray, you know, just so it isn't this uh, um, ultramarine blue color. We don't want uh, we don't want everything to be ultramarine blue. So that's why you know I'm trying to get a, a variation in some of the color here. So I'm going to at this point let the bridge dry up. I'm going to come back to my uh, back to my birch trees. Now I've grabbed a little bit of the ultramarine. No, I'm sorry, the indigo. A little bit of the. Uh, gosh, burnt sienna, and I'm just gonna very kind of lightly. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't want the spots to be too big. I don't want this to be too much of a pattern either. So what we want is. Maybe a couple, then a, one on the side, another one a little, little, maybe a little bigger one at the bottom here. But what we're trying to do is uh, not create a, too much of a pattern here. People are notorious. I, I'll, I'll warn them. Don't, don't do a pattern. Don't go that 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 all the way down. Don't make it look like a flute. Okay, so. And I'll warn people, and they'll still do it because you sometimes you just don't realize how uh, how we're so ingrained to create pattern. Basically, as an artist, I kind of found this out, and as a teacher, it just kind of really uh, hit home when I saw it happening over and over and over again. I thought it was pretty funny, actually. So that's why I warn you. And then at least one of your trees will still have a wonderful flute-like pattern on them. <laughs> but try. Try as best you can. So I've now uh, applied the larger, um, I don't know what, the, I don't even know what they're called, black. Mm, uh, they're not knots. They're... No, they're not knots. Uh, believe it or not, they're actually air holes. Um, the trees are so, the, the bark is so not dense, but um, airproof. That's why they're great for canoes and everything. Um, that the tree needs a, actually a place to breathe through, uh, and and that's what they're actually for. Somebody told me that once. I went, "You're full of crap. <laughs> that's baloney. That's those are not." <laughs> I was wrong once again. Always. No. Uh, Actually, it was Sheila Blau. She's the one that, that informed me. And Thanks, I, Sheila. And honestly, Sheila, it, you know, Sheila puts up with a lot of my uh, strong knowledge of nothing, I guess, you know. And she comes by quietly and corrects me. But and I appreciate it years later. So, okay. So... I am now very lightly trying to get very fine lines, okay? So you want to get your good brush out, and we want to do just tiny, thin little lines, okay? And we don't want them everywhere. We want to do them kind of like in two or three uh, line chunks. And if you'll notice, I try to kind of give it a wee bit of a curve. A wee bit of a curve. Yeah, I even like saying that. That's fun. All right. So the curve kind of makes it a little rounder, makes it look a little more uh, real. I've, I've seen people where they do this straight across, and it just, it looks, it flattens it, basically. It flattens the, the tree, and it looks very two-dimensional. So try to get that little bit of curve going, okay? Little curve. All right, so like I said, you don't have to you don't have to cover the whole tree. But you have to get enough to make it interesting. So unfortunately, it takes a while. If you'll notice how my hand is on the table, basically what I'm doing 
is that's my anchor. So once I kind of have my thinness of my line and I can just kind of hold my hand steady there, just keep moving up and down. If you try to do this, and I see a lot of people trying to do that, it's really hard to be consistent. All right, so. Gee, is that why you spin the paper around so you can keep your hand anchored without putting it into the wet paint? That's right. Wow. Actually, what I try to do is, I don't try to do everything on one tree all at once. Um, it just, again, you run that pattern thing through, you know. So what I do is I do try to kind of break it up a little bit as I'm working. I'll do a little here, a little there. And it does. It, it kind of helps. So thank you, Mark, for pointing that out. Yeah. You were trying to make fun of me. No, I was pointing out to the uh, billion people that always comment about how you spinning the paper yep. makes them dizzy. But if and you were, I actually enjoy doing that. If they were painting, you would probably recommend that they spin the paper themselves yeah. to paint the other side without sticking their hand in it. Yes. All right, so this looks pretty good. Now, here's the next step. Now you're going to take a little bit of the burnt sienna, okay, and you're going to do the same thing. Only this time, if you can, you want to make your lines even finer, okay? And Oh, that, that wasn't good. All right, so uh, you might notice they're not finer. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just taking... Right over top of those little dark areas that you did, I'm just taking a little bit of that burnt sienna. And I'm kind of kind of filling in around it a little bit, dragging a little bit of that color. Down and around. It just uh, as you can see, it kind of brightens up the tree a lot. But what I also want is uh, I need a few of those fine lines, too. Now, you don't have to have as many as the black, but we got to get a few in there. Here and there, just a... Uh, okay. And as you can see, I don't just do, like, down one edge completely. I'll do some on the edge. I'll do some in the middle, just like the black spots. I'm kind of moving the the fine lines that I'm painting, I'm moving them around too. So that they're not in just da -da 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 pattern straight down the tree. So anyway. So I took a little brown there. I'm gonna take a little bit of gray. I'm gonna separate this tree from the other tree just by adding a little bit of shadow. So as you can see, I'm now taking my paint and just running it kind of right up the side there, just to give it a little more shadow on one side than the other. Okay, that helps round it out a little more too. So there we go. All right, so same thing. Take a little bit of the brown, maybe a little bit of the ultramarine blue. I'm just going to go up the edge. So, Miss Mark, we have company. We do. So, what do you think? I don't know. How much more do you think you got? Well, probably another 20 minutes. Okay. So, do we take a break? Yeah, we take a break real quick. All right, we're going to take a break. Hi everybody! We, we took a yeah, we, we took a break. Yeah, we took a long break. Let we the, did a long break, uh, and we decided uh, that I needed to change my clothes, wash my hair, all kinds of stuff. Put some glasses on. Put some glasses on. So we're back, baby, and uh, we're about to uh, continue on uh, the uh, little snow uh, scene Christmas card that we're painting for Grandma, whoever. Anyway, um, I'm going to continue. Uh, 
just in case, I'm just going to show everybody where we were at a few minutes ago. <laughs> but this is a card. And so I was kind of painting it like this yesterday. But it started curling up in the night a little bit. So I decided to kind of tape it over and uh, kind of straighten it out. So I'm going to continue this way. So uh, I'm picking up a brush and I'm about to begin. So I'm going to start on... Uh, the trees in the background and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make them um, half covered in snow you know that kind of winds blown some of it off or it's melted a little but uh, I don't want them completely white because I don't think it was that bad a storm so anyway so but I what I'm going to do is just where I've kind of indicated a tree, I'm just not going to paint everywhere. I'm going to leave chunks that look like snow kind of sitting on branches. Wow, that's cute, Keith. That's adorable. I knew you would, you would back me up. Anyway, so it is, uh, they're kind of fun. But you get rewarded for not painting everywhere, you know. So, there's one. I'm just glad it's something that's not a birch tree. I want, I, I'm glad it's something that isn't blue. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting tired of ultramarine blue all of a sudden. Well, if you would do snow scenes at dawn, then well, it'd be true. Yellow everywhere. So, as I mean, you can see. I just kind of leave some of it white. Uh, and gosh, my hair is very fluffy now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and so is my t-shirt. So it's now become a turtleneck. The amazing powers of film. Yeah, I still haven't decided if I might cut out that intro and see if anybody just notices. <laughs> what what happened? What what we're what's we, going on? Have we been here this long? His shirt's growing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And his his hair seems to be puffier. Okay. So anyway, there's one little batch. I'm going to continue on. Now I'm going to put a little shadow on that snow on these trees. I'm going to let the green dry first. I'm being forced to hold my hand way back here so I don't drop my hand into the... I could have started over here and worked this way, but I'm left-handed and uh, by God, we do things backwards. So you could also flip the paper around. You know, I know how the audience loves that. You know, it's like a free ride, you know? So, <laughs> Warning, <laughs> do not wear VR goggles when yeah. watching Keith paint. I'm puking. Whoa! Yeah. Anyway. So, the bridge has a little bit of snow on the top of it. So, I'm going to try to leave kind of like a little bumpy white area between the bridge and the... Uh, and the trees, so you, it gets the feeling that there's a layer of snow on the uh, edge of the of the uh, bridge, top of the bridge. So, all right, here we go. All right. I'm now going to do what Mark suggested. I hate when he's right all the time. I'm slowly. Oh, I'm waiting to see which suggestion it was because some of them weren't that nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was off camera, though. So that's different. All right. So, actually, the reason we had to stop is uh, Mark has a, a lovely 
six-year-old girl um, that just um, is very bouncy. She makes a lot of uh, noise, so it's kind of hard to, to film. So we take a break and wait till she's in school and start again. So, They've seen her in some of the older videos. Yeah, exactly. And she's uh, cute as a button. Is that a compliment? I always wondered about that. Mm -hmm. All right. It depends on the button. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. So, I'm bored. I learned that. I'm bored of doing trees. <laughs> Keep telling you to paint other stuff. You won't do it. You won't let me dr paint dead grass anymore, so... <sighs> I know. I want fun, sunny, tropical. Later. Later. In When we get farther into winter, we'll get farther away from winter. Um, we'll do a couple winter scenes and then we'll escape to uh, sunny uh, Florida or... Um, I do have a couple uh, river scenes. Uh, Mayaka River down in uh, near uh, Sarasota, Venice area. Um, I have some beautiful uh, pictures of that. Uh, and I'm going to probably do a couple scenes from that particular area. Um, I also have a little bit of Hawaii, but probably not too much of that. Because I did that for 10 years. <laughs> I'm still, still sensitive. How about a Hawaiian scene? Mm, no. Or... Maybe a desert with cacti. Ooh. Ooh, I do. That is going to be one that we're going to do. Uh, I was in Arizona. I got some great uh, prickly pear shots that I think will be awesome. Um, just uh, variations in color and, uh, you know, the subject matter is fairly simple, but you can get a very nice, very complex, very beautiful watercolor out of it. Uh, I think that's a awesome idea. You weren't even... You didn't even think that was a good idea. But I did. No, oh, I was waiting for your traditional, like, I don't paint cacti! Or... Oh, no. I don't paint something. I've uh, actually... Um, have not uh, done it. Painted the cacti yet. Mm -hmm. But when I saw the photos, when I, you know, started bringing them up on the computer and everything I went dang this is this is fun the color the light the how the shadows hit you know on different chunks of the of the uh, cactus and well, everybody's, not, everybody's well I was also thinking like that salt technique would be really cool for like the dry desert ground or you know getting the natural yeah. crackling and well what's kind of funny is the kind of cacti I'm talking about very close up so you don't really get to see that close kind of up. what I wanted epic that yeah, well, that's uh, you're talking about the big sir. What are they? Sir, sir, I can't remember the name of the cactus, but the great big ones with the arms that yeah. you see in all the cartoons. Yeah, you see those and some mountains in the background yes. and some dry desert tumbleweed. We, maybe you can sneak a skull of oh, a yeah. something in there because I know you like skulls of something. Um, cows, steers. With the long horns. There we go. I kept trying to figure out who kept walking all those cows into the middle of the desert to die, but... So, I'm now doing a, a tree that's a little bit closer, more in the foreground than the back. So, I am... I've made the green a little bit darker, so it appears, you know, that it's closer, okay? That and the fact that it's a lot bigger. Am I still in the picture? You're in the picture, we just can't see through your hand. Oh, yeah. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, let me get through this. Because I don't want to paint it upside down. I, I find that slightly uncomfortable when I'm working bigger. So just bear with me. I'll try to keep, I can kind of keep my hand back a little. Yeah, that, that helps. Okay. Just when yeah, you're right on top of it, it's like, uh, your hand's beautiful, but get it out of the way. Yeah, it's like amazing. Look, a tree. Poof. Yeah. Presto Magico. Now this tree, and I love, I love how they, uh, uh, the snow kind of builds up over 
actually over the bigger branches at the bottom. So that's what I'm doing right now. Is I'm kind of pushing this, these uh, branches into the snow itself. The snow bank itself. I'll let a little out there. Um, and usually it's because the branches become so heavy with the snow on top of them that it literally just pushes them right into the ground. Um, a lot of things, once you start doing things, it's amazing your observation. All of a sudden, especially you start doing skies, boy, good luck. Don't drive, okay? Just, uh, you know, have someone else drive because you, all of a sudden your attention span, your attention is drawn to uh, different cloud formations and stuff like that. I think it's it's absolutely wonderful. Just like I said, don't don't drive. Um, but as you paint, as you draw, as you do more, you will see more, and that's what's kind of um, important with art. That you, you start developing not only your hand skills but your eye skills too. Uh, you know, it, it's a it's very fun. I, I love it. That's why I like teaching kids. Because I teach them early, you know, what to look for. And it really does uh, help them get better faster. So, I'm, what I'm going to do now is, do you see the snow on this tree here? I am going to kind of maybe give it a little bit of a shadow here and there just to make it look like it's, you know, a little more three-dimensional. It's got like a little bit of a, a lip to the snow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to go back in with a little bit darker green again. And uh, now I'm going to take off my glasses. And I'm going to try to define these branches just a little bit more by trying to get like little fine lines in there to make it look like um, individual uh, needles. Okay. okay. Well, if that's the kind of tree you're painting, I don't know. Yeah, needles. What do you mean? It's a Christmas. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Well, I wasn't sure what kind of tree that was. I don't want to make any assumptions. Yeah, I hate you. All right. If it wasn't for the camera, all the fancy editing equipment and all the other stuff he does, um, boy, I would just tell him off. All right, so... I think at this point, I'm now going to switch over to the bridge. I'm gonna, I want to make the value a little bit darker, and I want the water to be a lot darker, too. I want that real cold dark of, uh, of uh, winter. It sounded serious, didn't it? It did. Winter. So, I am... Um, when you're done, I'm going to take a can of white spray paint and make it look like a snowstorm came in. Just Again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of my younger students have these little white pens now. Gel pens, I guess? Oh, my God. I yell at them, you didn't leave any highlights! What's wrong with you? And I come back later, and they're all, you know, got highlights in it. It's like... Get with the technology, kid. Back, back in the old days, we didn't have any. We didn't have any gel pens, and we liked it. Yep. You know, it's like you leave it white. Well, I watch that with a lot of the the computer artists too. Now, it's like, okay, I'm gonna fill this, and now I'll draw in the highlights separately. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's so much nicer. Yeah. No, that's wrong. <laughs> it's it's cheating. All right, back in the old days, I like saying that. Yeah. I just can't get used to drawing on the screen yet. Um, you know, I had uh, had a beautiful Wacom tablet, huge, huge Wacom tablet, and I just was not comfortable. I don't like having to push buttons on my pen and stuff. Uh, 
sort of like I can't play the new, you know, game systems because too many buttons. Way too many buttons. So as you can see, I'm kind of coming through. I don't want to... I don't want to do... I don't want to color it all in, and I definitely want to leave some light here and there. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is really deepen the color of this water. But also, you know, sometimes you get that little bit of ice that is kind of hanging on. So that's what these edges are, the blue. Uh, but to do that, you got to make sure you got enough dark to, to make it work. So here we go. And I like the little ripples and stuff in here. So the other thing, though, I want you to kind of look at is even though the river is going this way, you do not paint this way. You want to still go with the horizon, okay? Uh, so as you can see, I'm, I'm painting more straight across. Uh, that's kind of a little bit of a common mistake that people do. Because then it kind of tips your, you know, uh, the perspective becomes, let's see, how can I say it? Wrong. And I point that out to people and they... And they hate me for it. Well, when you say it like that, it just sounds <laughs> mean. I, didn't, I never said I was a nice teacher. In fact, uh, I'm pretty sure most of my uh, younger students will verify. They actually warn the other kids. He's not nice. Thank you. So I can do watercolors. Save those tears! We can do effects <laughs> with them! There's natural salt in there! <laughs> Yeah, you're you're not far off. Use the tear sponge. The uh, it's kind of fun because honestly, they they do they they uh, they also give back uh, just about as hard as uh, I give out. So it's the adults that fight me. It's kind of fun. I had uh, one of my students, uh, Rosemary. Uh, said, you know, there's other ways of saying things, like, might I suggest, or, you know, I would do it this way, not, you're wrong, what the heck is that, I can't believe you did that. I'm going to have to reset cameras in a second here, so. Okay. Yeah. So, then, you know, we can take a break right here. All right, let's do that. Okay. So, stop painting, take a quick break, be back in a half a second. Ah, the amazing power of video. And like magic, we're back. Um, so, I am going to, um, I'm going to come in, I'm going to add a little more dark to this water. And then, uh, while I was sitting there, I kind of decided I want to bring a little more... Uh, one of these trees down a little bit farther and bring it into the foreground. I think it'll look good. So, can you see how I leave, uh, as I'm painting this dark, do you see how I leave little lights and darks in there? Hopefully you can. Um, if you're watching it on your phone, eh, I don't know. So, anyway, but as you can see, there's a little bit of light and dark in all of this. So, it just gives it the feel that there's a little bit of ripple in the water, that it's moving. This ice, I'm kind of, little ice shelves that are coming out. I'm leaving the lighter blue to be the ice shelves. All right, so I'll come over here. I'm going to kind of smooth this out a little bit. I think there's too much action going on. I want to make sure people understand it's a river. <laughs> okay. Alright, so, yeah, I like that. Um, just trying to get a little more dark here and there. Dark really helps to, you need that contrast when you're, you're painting. When you're finished, your painting should be something from very light, the white obviously, to very dark. Um, you want that full contrast in a painting. So right now, 
Kind Maybe of, you do. I like pastels. Yeah. I but want it my, should be a full contrast. I want my pastels. winter. I want my winter scene to look like an Easter egg. Oh man. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to let that dry up, and then I can always come back and look at it and say, "Well, that's. I need to do more of this or more of that." But for the most part, I kind of like what I got here. So let's stop here with the river. And I'm going to go back in, and like I said, I'm going to add a little more tree. In this section here, I have the tree kind of behind the bridge area. But I'm going to bring this tree down, because I think it'll create a better image, I think. Plus, we make the bridge disappear behind something. Oh. You know, it's not a bridge that goes on forever over land. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just... Pushing a little more of this tree. Now the tree is in front of the highway. Okay, cool. I like it. Ship it. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, I want to kind of put some detail into this. Uh, well, one more thing. Huh? Yeah, I know. Um, I forgot, under the bridge here, you should be able to see some of the scenery back here. So I'm going to actually have to maybe throw a tree, a tree base or two under here. So, so it looks like it, you know, continues on under the bridge. Oh, isn't the water under the bridge? Yeah. But also, you know, we need a little bit of a, a little bit of ground, you know, background back there. So, anyway. Yeah. So we know there's, we know there's trees back here because we can see them above the bridge. Okay. And then... What I'm going to do is take a little bit of the blue and I'm going to kind of just kind of create a little bit of a bank. There we go. And oops, kind of nailed some of the green in there, but I think that works. So we will now move on to the bridge. So I've been sitting here pondering, I think it needs a, I got a little bit of this brown here in the trees, I think I need a little bit of this uh, burnt sienna somewhere else. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of brown up my bridge a little bit. It's not going to be totally all brown or anything, but I want some of that color in the bridge. So I've kind of mixed a little. Um, little of burnt sienna in but I'm I think I'm gonna add just a little more brown it's a little bit browner not as gray dang it's fighting me it's actually pushed the brush away there we go oh my god did they see my bald spot uh -huh. I don't have a bald spot I was just Teasing my friend Paul Steinmetz, who was entirely bald. All right. I think at some point somebody's going to write and say that I'm mean. Where? In the comments. No. Oh, I'll put it there if you want. <laughs> He's mean. I don't like him. So what I'm doing is, is I'm also leaving, I'm kind of treating it like there's a little bit of light in the bridge. But it isn't all just brown. See how I leave little chunks of light in there, the, the, the more grayish color? I want to leave a little of that. So I'm trying to make it look kind of more like a you know, brick or a maybe stone. 
I don't want it all just little tiny lines. I want it also to have a little color too. So right up under the little lip, the guardrail, whatever you want to call it, I, I'm, I want it a little bit darker under that. And then I'm going to paint my guardrail. And it's not really guard, it's more like a, you know, it's got a stone, stone cap on it. So all I'm going to do is start putting my lines in. And then I'll wash it with a little more color. Now this isn't like a little rail, this is gonna, this is like the cracks between the bricks, if you're wondering. Alright, so, I'm going to let them dry up a little bit before I try to wet it. In the meantime, I'm going to take a little bit more of the brown. The burnt sienna, I'm going to add maybe just a little bit of uh, the indigo. And what I'm going to do in these dry areas, hopefully, I'm going to make little kind of just, you don't have to fill it in with all brick. It's kind of nice. You just kind of do two or three at a time. And your eye will kind of fill it in for you. Your imagination. Ooh. I know. It's a little bit wet though, so I gotta kinda wait here. I think it's too soon for me because my bricks are going and I don't want that. Okay, so so no, I'm just uh I'll find something else to do. Okay. I'm not leaving. Keep yourself busy. Yeah, I'm not leaving. So right under that little edge of snow, I'm putting a little shadow under the under the snow on the bridged you know railing top and I'm just going to take a little bit of uh, color just kind of wash that in so that the edges are still there you can still see the bumps of all that all right so uh, one more thing while I'm waiting for the bridge to dry, I decided to put in some of the branches from these birch trees. Kind of very, very, we don't want them very thick, okay? Because these are more the tippy tips. I just wanted to kind of put that in there just to kind of Fill a kind of dull sky. Not dull, but it doesn't have a lot of clouds and there ain't a lot of room for them, so I'm just, just thinking, hmm, might be nice to just throw a few sticks and twigs in there just to give it the feeling a little more a little more detail. I got one maybe coming. I actually do want it to kind of go over, some of them to go over a couple of things. There we go. Okay. All right, still, bridge is still a mite damp. I'm also going to put, now I'm taking a little bit of that brown, I'm gonna mix it with a little of my Naples yellow, a little burnt sienna. And I think Mark knows what I'm gonna be doing. Uh -oh. Dead grass. Oh no! Just a, yeah, just a few. Why? Yeah, come on, just come on, come on. No. Some of this dead grass. Oh, it, it'll stay above the. <sighs> it won't be. Okay, never mind. 
I'm not going to make them happy. But what I'm doing is, uh, you know, snow, you know, kind of rough, tumbly areas. Snow doesn't cover everything. There's always a few little bits and pieces that manage to poke through. Weeds. Mailboxes. What? I know what he's thinking. If I put a mailbox in here, it'll kill me. Alright, so I start with a lighter, kind of that lighter tan color. I come through with a little bit of brown. Just a slightly darker. It just kind of makes it a little more uh, interesting. If you have a variation of, uh, you know, grass and weeds. As you can see... Well, why couldn't this be the first snowfall and the grass is still green underneath? You know what? Why does it always have to be dead grass? Um, because it's dead grass that stand out. I'm starting to think you don't like the uh, the the crimson and whatever colors you pick. It's because you're always trying to get rid of them, use them all up. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I want more bird sienna. I want more gray. <laughs> more gray. <laughs> more ult uh, more ultramarine blue. I can't get rid of this blue. These these schminky brand. Uh, they just go on forever. The, the, pigment never runs out so as you can see I've made like a little um, a little village of dead grass <laughs> just kidding um, <laughs> I think Mark is like I think it's time to wrap this up uh, I believe you're full of you're now full of crap all right uh, kind of last thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and I'm going to put the little bricks into the wall here and there. And it does work a lot better. So do them in groups of three, five. Always kind of go with an odd number if you can. I mean, it's not the law or anything, but, well, now that I, no, it's, it just, uh, for some reason, things work better in odd numbers. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just putting in three or five or, you know, together at a time. So right now I got a little lighter brown. You know how bricks are. They kind of. Varying color, so I'm gonna get a little darker now. I don't have to put a ton in, just a couple more here and there. Alright, Mr. Mark. Yes. Might be time for. You know what I'm going to do? Oh. Just to make sure. Oh, a couple more things. One more thing. I keep saying that. Make sure you get a little bit of shadow on your snow in your trees. It just makes them look a little more three dimensional. More shadows, more yep. highlights. More stuff. So I did a little more there. Um, excuse me. Um, also, I'm just going to take a little bit of this violet, the very light stuff. I'm just going to hit my corners. If it doesn't have... Um, I'm just adding a little color just so it kind of finishes out the picture because when I take the tape off I want to see I want to see a border all the way around kind of thing so I'm just kind of adding a little bit of color along the edge also um, 
I might actually do this to kind of give it the feeling of the trees got a little bit of shadow going there and honestly even the you know even the sticks and twigs might have just a little bit of just depends on the amount of light okay how fun is that all right so now the unveiling okay now the unveiling except for this <laughs> i'm just gonna never trust them boys and girls they'll trick right. you I'm, I'm oh, oh I'm, I'm gonna show you what it did. i'm just kidding no 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 i'm not i just like being on camera <laughs> I like being on camera <laughs> All right, so I am now going to yank off the tape. Think faster. I'm, I'm, are we <laughs> we're running out of time? I'm going to have to reset this again in a minute or so. so. Uh, okay. Well, maybe. Maybe what? If we can finish up quickly. Well, I'm wondering. So, as you can see, the tape creates this wonderful uh, professional border. If you can find three quarters, because well, three quarters is nice because it doesn't one inch it, and you got a lot of white. <laughs> yeah, uh, three quarters is not so bad. So here it is. See how by just putting a little bit of color in here, kind of helped it finish it out all the way around. Um, I'm sure I could play with this for a for a little while longer, but this is you know fun and done. You know. So it's kind of a fun gift to give to someone. Uh, you can certainly, plenty of room to write whatever you want. And um, I think uh, I'm about done. Mr. Hicks, do you have any uh, so, suggestions? As or? usual, give this video a like if you want to see more stuff like this. Leave a comment with any questions or suggestions. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. Yeah. Uh, check the links below. We'll have the line drawing for this so you can re-watch and do it yourself or follow along. As well as links to purchase any of the materials that Keith used in this video. Uh, we get a small commission if you use the links but you don't pay any extra. And we go, yay, thanks. Uh, or use it as a checklist to buy at your local art supply center. Thanks for watching. Thank you, everybody. Take care. I should have a catch line. Keep painting. How's that? And remember, keep painting.